After all this, they may have to paint the White House red. Blood stained on unclean hands and no peace for the dead. Holding supplies hostage from states that won't kneel. Peddling pharmaceutical solutions that aren't even real. The bodies piling up. New York had to dig a mass grave. Still yearning to breathe free, sacrificing our enlisted brave. Pious on the podium, make America great again. When exactly in American history has it ever been? Maybe when we destroyed the missions or fought the Civil War, massacred Native Americans, caged children, who's keeping score? Was it when humans were legal slaves, building railroads or picking cotton, interned in camps, or another era that the textbooks have forgotten? Say their names, mask up and march six feet apart and grieve, because black lives matter, God is love, me too, and I can't breathe. I love my country, the only home I've ever known, the good old U.S. of A. But we need evolution and not a revolution, the dawn of a new day. We are the people, the powerful proclamation of our constitution. But only for free men, slaves were not included in that absolution. Seasons have come and gone, centuries of scars mar our land. But I guess I need to break it down because some of y'all still don't understand. Slavery was abolished, but racism never ended. The language of our liberty needs to be amended. People are treated unfairly, like their lives don't matter. Their rights are wrought as rungs for another man's ladder. Free will is revoked based on the shade of your skin, or your gender, or religion, or when your love is seen as sin. Our states once wove together, stars and stripes became united, but the edges were left unfinished. We've unraveled and divided. When this pestilence is behind us, what will we be? Enemies choking on tear gas from sea to shining sea? Or will the survivors rise up, our country remade, the new foundation of our freedoms carefully laid? For everything that has been lost, for every larceny, every moral wrong, as American neighbors instead of strangers, finally all just getting along. A nation built only for greatness, turns into hatred and like Rome will fall. It's now or nothing, the rubble of ramparts with liberty and justice for all. After all this, they may have to paint the White House red, or we the people can paint in peace using every color instead. My name is Allie, and um, I will be reciting a poem for the Poetry Slam today. Okay. How can I explain to you that all the various things I do is to make me feel better? It's slow. It'll make me greater. How can I explain to you the personal war I'm going through? Its roots come from the time before, even before you and mom were no more. How can I explain to you that I would rather die than to unfortunately pursue a career where I'll end up hanging myself because I cannot bear to input discipline that's for someone else? How can I explain to you that you'll find me like a chandelier hanging from my noose? Maybe this will make you realize that to save me, just silently listen to my cries. Follow me through my rabbit hole, the entrance to my mind, my home. You'll notice that my cleaning lady isn't here because it hasn't been prescribed to me, my dear. Follow me through this walk alone, that I often walk long distances alone. Depression jumps at me, Taints my serotonin like innocence. I'm naked, exposed to my memories, making fun of my presence. Now, follow me to the dark web. Here's where the nice alley ends. This is my true, raw, original form. Oh, what's this? A crying face and mine bruised little girl. 
come with me. Let's go ahead and see what this girl represents to decipher how far is her depression at what length. Her bruised forehead represents her mind abusing her identity, taunting her, feeding her lies when it's not a reality. She often fights them, kicks them to the ground, but they don't disappear. They always come back around. Her squished throat represents submission, always listening, but cannot join in conversation, often feeling ignored, a pathetic piece of dirt. She often has to do tedious tasks to prove her worth. Yet the girl remains silent, but her mind is not resistant. Her words, her long solo conversations, spilled like ink on her paper, writing like there's no tomorrow, but maybe save it for later. Now, let's examine her heart. Hmm. It looks like it's about to fall apart. The unconditional love tape keeps it together now. Supposedly, there's a way to fix it, but I don't know how. Her hands, oh, her hands. Red stained, also her best friend. Is the main reason she's still alive. I guess that's something she should take pride. If you touch her hands, her fingers. The words transport to yours, a sad feeling, feeling which lingers. That's her last desperate cry for help before she takes her one-way ticket to hell. Now, let's get out of here before you stain this stark porcelain doll. We don't want your perfect daughter to fall. Let's exit through this door which is the exit the chemical the happy chemicals have used before follow me through this therapy wouldn't you help her after seeing her anatomy our little girl is no longer her mandatory loneliness has made her stronger how can i explain to you that even the strongest gods can lose you have two options either to respond to cries from our little girl or witness Hades take your Persephone to the underworld or, in your words, hell. I hope you choose well. Thank you. Wishing from afar. Hole in the center, life split it in two. Cold to the touch, feeling pretty blue. Shattered I was, remembering the last time we spoke. I was left all alone, quite a heart broke, empty inside, without nowhere to turn. Ouch! The immense pain I felt like a fresh cutly burn. It hurts to just think that your sweet voice I will not hear no more. I'm at peace, knowing you're up there in God's arms, resting your soul. Things never get easier, I just take it day by day. All these years with you gone, I wish you could hear with us forever stay. Without explanation, without anything to say, I look up to the sky and just know everything will be okay.
Cubism, written and recited by Alexandria Lambert. The sun tears through my burning flesh. The screams of a melting woman preys on the witnesses, who shy from their fellow crimes. Thy heaven and hell compel me to fight against the words that keep dormant in my brain. Yet, isn't it for my God that I endure these burning pains? Or for the ignorant who stochasts me as a witch, those who see my body twitch, I am crippled. Due to the liquidous chemicals, their water, my acid. As the acid burns through my modest clothes and beautiful skin, I am forced to bear my head from thy wrap. So sacred indeed, yet hell with it. The oppression to which I fall in victim. Mama, Papa. I've cried like a child. Pain cares not for the weakened or the old. I stand between life and death, a young soul still. I was dying. This was my hell, that I was destined to live over and over again. Therefore, why must I keep timid with my words? I scream. I cry. I plead for my Savior. If he is so great, why does he leave me with scars in this purgatory, the self? The hell in which my people reside. I am the witch that they have pleaded away with mutilation and murder. I am innocent. I am innocent. I am not innocent for being like them. I was born into the wrong world. <laughs>
time brings us closer to the ending. You idolize heterosexuality. You idolize girls in pretty dresses. You idolize body types. And you're idolizing straight teeth and perfect eyesight. Your false promises are no more. Women of all generations won't let you do it again. We have spread your secrets. No little girl should wonder what's wrong with me. I am here to say it again. We are rationalizing trauma. We are pretending the ending is always going to be happy. We are setting standards that are impossible for girls to follow. My happy ending doesn't look like Disney. My happy ending is... Well, my ending is... Where is my happy ending? Hello, I am Emily Vasquez, a student here, 10th grader at ECHS, and I'm going to be reading you my poem, Why I Chose to Stay, for the Poetry Slam virtual. Um, a quick thing before I get into it, it is sort of sensitive on a sensitive topic, and there are many metaphors and similes in this, so it may not make sense, but to me, it means a lot. So. Without further ado, uh, I'll read it. Why I Chose to Stay The grass doesn't grow in the sky, for the clouds contain only rain. Your toes kiss the grass, turning into the sun. The sky gives very few refunds. What once you kept could be lost forever. Grip onto the life jacket you're offered. You can stop the drowning. Band-aids only work if you want one. As faucets run water, overflow if you don't close them. Friends with rose petals that grow to the sky. Wish I was October, but I'm July. Red rubies with wings fly high in my trees and blue diamonds next to them. I wish I knew just how good cherries were before they turned tart and dry. Don't need angel wings, you don't have to fly. What's up there is peace, but not of my kind. Rainbows are smiles in the sky. I have flowers inside me that haven't stopped growing, but I wish the weeds weren't so tough. There's thorns in the bushes, and they're so beautiful, but those are just not my kind. My favorite people can only exist if I make them real in my mind. Tall statues, they're moving, laughing and cheering, but no one can see it but I. Your smile is perfect. I can only see you. Those eyes, they control my mind. These are just a few reasons why I chose to stay why I chose to stay alive. Thank you for your time. I struggle, you know my pain. Crooked and rough, everything is all plain. Feeling trapped in loneliness and fear, Afraid to take a chance. Nothing at the moment seems to be clear. Sometimes, I feel like something so vulnerable and small. It's like I don't exist. That nobody hears when I call. I feel your presence. I take a deep breath. I know I have to be strong. You reassure me. That nothing can possibly go wrong. I pick myself up and continue to try to be brave. You rescued me. I no longer have to worry and feel trapped in this cave. Moments like these, I know I can always trust in you, my lord. You guide me and remind me why it's important to keep my word. To have faith and be faithful. To see the good things in life and be grateful. Great things in life take a lot of patience and time. 
Just look. This poem proves my God's given talent. It's to have fun with this rhyme. Through so many ways, you have shown me the true meaning of love. I could ask for nothing more. You've blessed me with an amazing family and great friends. I owe it all to the man up above. I know you will continue to guide me. Help me, help me be a better person and warm my heart. Deep down in my soul, I shall have confidence that my mission I'm here to do is never impossible to start. As the ink spreads onto the page by Alexandria Lambert. I am never guaranteed to tell my story, nor to live more than a day, nor to feel the warmth of a hand as the ink spreads onto the page. I'm never guaranteed to travel to the world, nor to stay in villages of blacks, blues, and reds nor to embrace others like me as the ink spreads onto the page. I'm never guaranteed the cap of safety, nor the exposure of the wind, nor the environment that deems me unfit as the ink spreads onto the page. I'm never guaranteed anyone, nor any place, nor anything as the ink spreads onto the page. I've gladly grown to stories told with grief down to the bone of young and old whose lives hold strong to fear of what is guaranteed. Guaranteed? What is guaranteed? Not you or me, not the sun or the breeze, not the birds or the trees, nor the ink spread onto the page. Light by Amber McAllister Paint chips under gravity Light shies away from the walls White paint peeks through its tan aging A ceiling sags from its restraints Toxic green webs are woven in the eyes glaring at me Charcoal hair is overpowered by raging red flames Pale skin in the absence of warm colors, and breath dances on the air effortlessly. She was almost peaceful against the broken evil house. Her thin lipped smirk was unsettling, but the house's demeanor was more so. Pastel blue paint lifts the walls into a smile. A light cuddles every wall lovingly. Walls open to expose every part it's itself, not a single shingle out of place. She wasn't evil there, I thought, but in this place of purity her color seemed darker than I had remembered. In a different place, in a different time, she held me close and I embraced every part of her. In this place and in this time, she held herself against the light. I saw the damage and looked away. I held myself against the light. She saw the damage and looked away. I was wrong. She hadn't changed. She was wrong. I hadn't changed. We didn't change, yet we looked so different.
creative creations. From pineapple, apple, bananas, and grapes, to pizza, lasagna, and fine juicy steaks. Many varieties all over the world. Fries, someone's favorite. I like them best. Curl. The tasty treats. There's so much more. Take a cracker, marshmallow, some chocolate to give you a s'more. There's more to the eye than yummy food. Nature is what most will agree will put you in a good mood. To the top of the mountains or under the sea, God's creations are very delightful to me. Tired Dreams Written and recited by Alexandria Lambert I don't know how tired I am until I hit the ground near my queen-size bed. It hurts, but it feels so good until I realize that the pain has infected me. Me, the tired old soul that only yearns to fall into a queen-size bed. The coma that I am doesn't leave me on the ground broken in pieces, restless, but takes me to a time where dreams fall awake and reality flows up to sleep. Dreams of being young, where no queen-size bed was needed, where the floor was a passage, not a dead end. Destination, where energy was given to me by the sun. However, the sun goes down. Now time has become a place where reality falls away and dreams flow up to sleep. The, these are times that scares me the most because as a young child growing up, the sun's energy seemed to only go to the plants. Foolish of the of the thoughts otherwise leaving me tired, depressed and dreamless. The rain clouds and the, the moon's dim light illuminate the reality that my dreams are flowing away. I didn't know how tired I was until I hit the ground near my queen size bed. However, I was not sleepless, just tired of seeing days and nights. <laughs>